Hello, my name is Dean Bostic, and welcome to my television show called Charities, Fundraisers, and Causes. The purpose of my show is to let the public know or increase awareness of the work that nonprofit organizations do within the community, also fundraisers and various causes throughout the community. Today, I want to welcome my guest, Joe Clark. She is with Stand Up for Kids, um, Executive Director. And Joe, welcome today. Thank you thank very you much Dave for coming. For having me. Absolutely, thank you very yeah. much for coming. You know, the weather was kind of um, <laughs> inclement, but thank you for, for making it. I really appreciate that. Okay. okay. So, Please Joe, absolutely. So, Joe, tell us a little bit about uh, Stand Up for Kids. Uh, what is your, um, your mission statement? Well, um, national mission statement, we are a national organization, is um, the mission of Stand Up for Kids is to help homeless and street kids. This mission shall be carried out by a national volunteer force whose on the streets outreach efforts will find, stabilize, and assist homeless and street kids in their efforts to improve their lives, never forgetting to tell the kids we care and then proceed to prove it. Okay, absolutely. And what does that mean to you in your own words? Uh, your translation or what kind of led you to this type of work? Well, when I heard that there were homeless kids out there who were out there for good reason in many cases and hungry and cold, mm. it really touched me. And Rick Kocher, who is the founder of Stand Up For Kids, uh, really made me see things very, very differently. Mm. And I started in 1998, and over the years I've seen many, many things that have really touched my heart. And even today, thinking about the snow, mm. I know that there are some kids out there who are sleeping in cars mm -hmm. or out in the woods in a tent. And I'm hoping that they're dry, and, and it's just really touches me a lot. And what also has touched me is the generosity of the community that has reached out to help us mm -hmm. as we have been able to talk about our program and more and more people are realizing what a great need there is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And what type of um, programs do you have? I mean, like throughout the throughout your organization, you know, what different types of functions do you do? Um, who do you help? Well, what age groups and uh, our main donations are food and hygiene items mm -hmm. and uh, we also collect clothes used clothing for teens we work with teens predominantly okay. and uh, the babies of teens and uh, we we do everything we can to keep them warm and dry mm -hmm. what so. type of age groups have you noticed um, that you have the most of? Is there a particular range or a particular age that you see uh, more of than any other? No, uh, it's just been growing through the years. As homelessness has grown in the community, mm -hmm. w more and more people, more and more school counselors, more and more teachers are recognizing that kids in their schools are homeless. Before it was quite often a secret, it was a confidentiality matter. Mm -hmm. And as the kids got a little braver about telling people that they really needed help, and then it filtered down to us so that we can help them, we get I asked for specific things. Mm -hmm. So um, our main effort has become providing food to, a uh, snack food, mm -hmm. to the kids in the alternative schools. Uh, we deliver every two weeks, and we're providing snacks for 180 kids a day. Oh, man. And um, I'd like to say that when we first started, we were doing street outreach, and we weren't very good at it. Mm -hmm. We'd, in other cities, you find homeless kids on the street all over the place, mm -hmm. but we couldn't find them. And we felt very bad about it. We were working very hard and getting resources and so on. And one of the volunteers who had been in it before I was said, well, she's a, a school teacher, and she said, do you realize we have homeless kids in school? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that, that was something you new. You think, yeah. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And so we started providing snacks for that particular school, and it was very well accepted. And then because of that, we got a foot in the door of all the other schools. Mm -hmm. Some of them called and said, could you help us? And in other cases, we went to them and said, this is what we're doing. Would you like us to help you too? Like we're doing today. You yeah. Let us know. You know exactly, you yeah. So. Um, what are some of your other programs? Do you, um, those apartment support? I was looking at your website and you do, um, you know, some apartment support. Um, who are some of your, um, your donors, donations that you get from some of your bigger um, organizations or? Well, churches have been very good, mm -hmm. a whole range of different churches. Some of them collect hygiene items or mm -hmm. clothing for us, and some of them actually donate money. Mm -hmm. uh, Rotary, Silverdale Rotary has been great, mm -hmm. and we are always recipients of the Ducks Buck race. And in turn, we try to help them back by selling more tickets or, or doing other projects to help them. The Bangor Com Catholic community uh, out at the chapel there on uh, Bangor has been marvelous and given us lots of cash donations. And they've also provided an angel tree both at Bangor and Jackson Park for the past three years. And last year, they also did a coat drive for us. And they're planning on having another coat drive in um, February this year. And the angel tree, tell us a little bit about that. How does that work? Well, you know how when you go in a grocery store, not a grocery store so much, but Walmart mm -hmm. or some places, they'll have a tree with little tags on it saying mm, okay. a kid needs a bicycle or um, an, a winter jacket or something. We decided we could use small things and that people could donate little things. And, and so the tags would read, it wouldn't be for a specific child, but it would be like a hat, gloves, scarf, socks, a gift card, chapsticks, things that we use all the time to give out to the kids. Mm -hmm. And then the people who go to the chapel take that and buy those products for us and, and deliver them and then we get them. And that's worked really, really nicely. Um, we've had, I think we had almost $5,000 worth of donations, not just from the Angel Tree, but this Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several businesses that did coat drives. There was the Navy Credit Union mm -hmm. and uh, the Kirby Vacuum Cleaner Place. Mm -hmm. and. Farmers Insurance mm -hmm. did coat drives, and there were other people who just gave us smaller amounts. Uh, the New Life Bible Study Group approached me and said they wanted to pack bags of food for kids who were homeless. And they started raising money and went out and bought groceries, and then they still had money left over, and more people gave. They mm -hmm. ended up providing 320 bags of food, each bag was sufficient food for a day. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that we, we give these snacks, 180 snacks a day to the schools, but over the last two years, the numbers of kids who are literally homeless, not just at risk, but literally homeless, but attending school at Renaissance and at Shield and Drawbridge, which are the alternative schools from the high school, Bremerton High. Mm -hmm. There are 10 homeless kids at each school, total of 20. Mm -hmm. And we have been providing them breakfast, lunch, and dinner for every Saturday and for every Sunday. Nice. And so these 320 bags of food were a big help. Because mm -hmm. I just sent out 40 today for one school, 10 kids. You need 40 bags of food for two weekends. And it, that's a lot of money, and it's a lot of food. And a lot of help. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. And uh, I have volunteers who come to my house. There was one woman who packs the snacks every two weeks. Mm -hmm. It takes her several hours. Mm -hmm. Another one who packs the food for the homeless kids. 
And then there is the woman who goes shopping to Costco for me, and she and her husband bring it over and deliver it nice. before we start packing. Okay. And um, then all of the, the different volunteers who come either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, it depends. Like yesterday was a holiday, so a couple came today, and we found out one of the schools was closed because of the snow, so that will go later. But they come to my house and pick up and deliver to the school. Uh, we're all volunteer. Nobody gets any pay whatsoever. Mm. And so it's, it's quite a, a routine that we have to pack up all this food and to make sure that it's available for the packer and that it gets to the right place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then in addition to that, we get calls from the school saying, well, uh, I need some socks, or I need a new pair of shoes for a kid size such and such, or um, maybe a jacket, or maybe two, j you know, we, we need jackets, it's snowing, and we need clothing. And um, to one school, I send a big bag with hats and, and gloves in it because, I, because it's cold, and some jackets because they'd asked. And then they will call me and say, hey, I, I need some more. Or sometimes I call them and say, what do you need? Oh, man. In September, we also provide school supplies, but um, that's kind of an iffy thing because each school has different needs. Okay. <laughs> so we, we buy up a bunch and when they're on sale and hope that we can help the kids. And um, our most expensive resource up is bus passes because for a kid is $25 a month for an ORCA card. Mm -hmm. It used to be 10 when we first started doing it, and it went to 15, and now it's 25. And uh, we only provide bus passes for 13 kids. No, just kids within Bremerton, or do you uh, work with kids outside of Bremerton? No, these are in the schools. Okay. Uh, some are from Discovery, some are from uh, Bremerton. Mm -hmm. And uh, not, not Bremerton, I'm sorry. Um, east, east alternative. Okay. So it's not downtown Bremerton. Mm. And we're fairly strict on that because of the cost. We don't want to give a kid a $25 bus pass if they're not attending school and they're not keeping up their grades mm -hmm. and they're just going to fool around and go down the mall. But the, the counselors know who need them. They really need them. And so that's, that's one thing that we do every month. And uh, we also were able to get a grant from the Kitsap Community Foundation to help the kids in the detention schools because by court order, they are attending schools down in Port Orchard, but they may live in the north end of the county or over far out like Seabag or mm. something. And it's very difficult for them to get to school sometimes because of the, the cost of transportation mm -hmm. and gas. Their parents are usually, l not always, but a lot of times they're low income. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the county has rules and regulations that make it difficult for them to take money for different causes. But we can hold the money, we can be the per the the nonprofit that holds the money, and then when they need the bus passes, we can provide it. Mm -hmm. So we're working with the foundation and with detention to be able to do that. And, and um, we also help, there are kids that have to attend drug and alcohol counseling, court ordered, mm -hmm. and they meet in various places in the county. And the counselor, just lets me know when he's running low. We give him a big box of snacks. There can't be anything that need water or spoon or anything like that because it's just real quick, you know, here, have something. But when the kids come in after school for their counseling, uh, if they're hungry, they really can't concentrate on, on what they're doing, so we provide that. Uh, the, uh, another thing that we do is provide layettes, a nice bundle of baby clothes, mm. all wrapped up in a lovely homemade quilt nice. for the new moms that don't have any family to support them. 
and we probably do 20 to 25 packages every year. And we take a homemade quilt and blanket and diapers and baby clothes and wrap it all up and then we make a package of nice toiletries for the mom. Nice. And the quilts are provided by a very, very kind lady who gives them to us. She and her daughter We'll make up as many quilts as I ask. I've asked nice. for as many as 20 at a time, and she has provided them. And they are in each individually beautifully made. And so that is a, a, a very huge support. It sure is, yeah. Yeah. And uh, baby, uh, gently used baby clothes is mm -hmm. something else that we like to receive. Mm -hmm. okay. Teenage clothing, warm clothing, new socks. If, if a kid needs a pair of shoes or underwear and socks, we try to make them new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a lot of times we'll get a call from one of the counselors saying that they have this problem, could we help? We also get complimentary coupons for free McDonald's hamburgers and fries. Oh, nice. Donated to us by the local office, mm -hmm. and they're very generous. They're, I'll say, I, I need some more, and I, they'll give me a stack of, you know, a hundred of each, nice. and then we just we give those to the kids on the street, or also to the counselors in the school to hand out, and they know who need them. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you: Do you notice a, the correlation between homelessness and drug addiction? Um, is there a direct correlation, do you think? I mean, do you think that homelessness, homelessness leads to um, drug addiction or the other way around? I have learned over the years that each case is individual. Okay. Yes, we, ha we have kids who do drugs, obviously. I don't know if they were doing it before they left home. Mm -hmm. There are many, many reasons. Can I talk about why kids leave home? Please. Yeah. yeah. I have been told this, and, and I've heard the, the individual cases, and, and from not only our volunteers, our counselors, but from the national organization. Because you can imagine, if we've, we've got a stand up for kids in 45 different cities. We have a lot of experience that we can share. Uh, 45 cities, just all across the U.S.? All across the U.S., nice. yeah. Trying to get it in every state. Mm -hmm. There can be over strictness, where the parents are beating on the kids or punishing them for minor wrongs. And the kids might have addictions and run away, or the parents might have the addictions. Sometimes the kids just leave because the parents have the addiction, mm -hmm. or it could be that the parents kick them out. Wow. And they say, you know, you straighten up. You, we frequently hear of young women who become pregnant who are immediately told to leave. You're not welcome anymore. Wow, that's pretty bad. Gay, lesbian kids have the biggest problem. Um, they figure 40% of all homeless kids are gay or lesbian and that they have been kicked out by their parents. Well, they can't tolerate that. it. A big problem is with step parents. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the mom loves her kids, but she brings in a boyfriend and mm -hmm. things don't go so well. Mm -hmm. It can be lack of communication. Sometimes an older kid in, in a family with a lot of children will feel like, well, I could get out there and get a job and help my mom mm -hmm. or my dad. They don't need to be feeding me anymore. Uh, there are many, many problems these days. It seems like, I don't know if it's just we hear about it more, but there are far more children with um, ADHD and mm -hmm. other problems that make it very difficult for the parents 
and the parents too. And now we're coming into another generation where some of the parents have these problems and they pass it on down to their children because they don't know how to take care of them mm -hmm. kindly, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, the fear of punishment. I mentioned pregnancy. A, a girl might think her parents are going to kick her out, so she'll leave rather than tell them what's going on. Um, ignorance is, of course, and under strictness, lack of basic care, where mm -hmm. the kids are just sort of turned loose, or yeah. the parents are so wrapped up in their own activities, or um, a lot of the single parents do bring somebody else into the family. Or you can imagine, you know, uh, say a, a, a step-parent comes in, they're married, now you're going to follow my rules. I don't like the way you're doing it. From now on, I'm the boss. Yeah, that kids sort of don't thing. like that. You yeah. know. And so uh, we've, we've heard of cases where um, even somebody in the family was sexually abusing a child, and because the, the, probably a ma the male, the, the husband, the yeah. father, um, might have a good position in the community. And so either the mother doesn't believe the girl or decides not to listen, or if the young girl reports it to the authorities, she's dismissed as lying and so on because the father is an upstanding man in the community. Do you and find a lot of that? I haven't personally, but I know that it does it happen. Exists. Yeah, I've heard of, uh, especially in the military, uh, even as high as an admiral, <laughs> who, I mean, who's going to believe the teenager when well, her father's an admiral, you know? That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we also helped the tribal center up at Suquamish uh, just with snack items, and uh, in turn, they and the, the Suquamish tribe and the Skalalam tribe have been very good giving us grants to help us along our way. Okay. And um, all right, let's see what else we do. We've got about 20 young people right now living in apartments. You asked about apartment support. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, they have food stamps and so on, but by the end of the month, they're getting really desperate. Or maybe they're just going into the program and the food stamps haven't kicked in yet or their, their assistance, whatever it is. And a lot of them have babies or very young children. And we get canned food that isn't really appropriate for, for kids who are homeless. We always ask for popped up cans. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if we get other things, that need to be cooked and so on, we, d we have quite a, a supply of food that we can give to kids who are, or young people who are in apartments. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, there are a few moms who uh, have been widowed, uh, have poor health, and they are raising teens and doing the best they can. And rather than having these kids being hungry, we can provide food for them. And we don't do it willy-nilly. Uh, in this case, there are several volunteers who, who, who know about this, and then they ask and come and pick up supplies for them. Are these organizations, do you work directly with um, organizations like CB or CPS? No, or things no, like I that don't. These are my volunteers okay. who, they seem to uh, find people all the time, their eyes are open. When they go shopping and they see somebody standing around outside the grocery store uh, mm -hmm. with a thin jacket on, they're not afraid to go up and say, hey, do you need a, a heavy coat or how are you doing? And, and the kids, op if it's kids, they open up to them. Uh, I, I can't do that. I can operate from my house, and I can organize all these volunteers, and I can call people and say, would you help? I need this, and I need this and that. But I, c I can't 
go up to these kids and, and I'm always afraid that I'm going to ask somebody who just has an old pair of jeans <laughs> and doesn't <laughs> need any help and, and they'd be embarrassed and I'd be embarrassed. Yeah. So that's why it's good. We've got about 30 volunteers and yes. some of them do a lot of things and some of them do just deliveries. Some, uh, everyone is a little bit different. I have one lady who drives our van. Diana deserves to be mentioned. She, she works at one of the alternative schools and she knows so many kids because of that. And she always has stuff in the car, warm clothing and food. And the kids no, when they see her coming and, and they're looking for happen. her. Yeah. yeah, and that's what we're supposed to do all over the place, and and uh, we're trying all the time. And you know, we get volunteers who come in and they're very keen and sincere, and then something happens. Maybe somebody in the family got sick and they have to quit. Or maybe if they're military, they get transferred. And so it, it's a learning process all the time. Mm -hmm. We have a few who are always with us. And um, we really value them. And, and you know, whatever any volunteer does that makes it less for me, I, they're valuable to me. Yeah. <laughs> I just love having all these people who, who are so keen to work on this problem. If you wanted to know, um, so if someone wanted to know more about um, donations or sponsorships or more that you do, what website would they go to? Website? Well, the best thing is for them to email me okay. at bremerton at standupforkids.org. Can you mention that again? Bremerton, bremerton at standupforkids.org. And I immediately, upon receipt, contact that person and send them out information. I encourage them to look at it and to call me. Uh, if they just want to make a donation, they can call me or if they have my phone number or they can email me and we'll either go pick up or they can deliver to my house. Through your website also, we make donations? Um, don't usually. Well, I'm sure that people see that they they could, but the best way is to email me. Okay. Yeah, I keep my computer up and running 24/7. Okay, man. When I'm home, <laughs> and I'm uh, nearly always home. Well, we have so much that we can talk about. We're about out of time here, but Joe, I want to thank you so much for braving the elements. I'm coming out to my show to talk about so much work that you do for the community. Wow. You have programs, you have volunteers, you have sponsors, a lot of people that work together to make your, your organization work as one uh, to help you know, the, the um, you know, people in Bremerton in need. So we want to thank you again. I'd like to have you back on a future show. Maybe we can talk about um, other programs that you have going on, and we will, um, you know, and I will hopefully be able to talk to you soon. So I want to thank you for tuning in to Charities, Fundraisers, and Causes. We want to thank Joe Clark, Executive Director of Stand Up For Kids. Uh, please show your support and go to her website. And May I say one thing? Sure I would ma'am. like to thank everybody who contributes to our cause and to all my good volunteers. Beautiful. And it, it, it's something that we all do together. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Joe, Thank for kind you. of spearing the whole um, organization. You do a really good job in keeping things together. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you very much, BCAT audience, for tuning in to Charities, Fundraisers, and Causes, and we we'll look forward to seeing you again.